Hello everyone and welcome to the weird, scary and horrible parts of humanity. Today we are looking at someone who is probably the most famous person in North Korea besides Kim Jong-un and undoubtedly the most famous woman in North Korea, melodramatic news reader Ri Chung-hae, who has been labelled by Bob Woodward as North Korea's Walter Cronkite in fear, Trump in the White House. This one is really going to be weird, and today we will try to find out as much as we can about this unknown North Korean institution and propaganda mouthpiece. However, much like North Korea itself, Ri, who is nicknamed the Pink Lady and North Korean newsreader, is something of an anomaly. For many, she has merely become a meme or representation in her melodramatic and shouty TV news broadcasts of the insanity of North Korea and fodder for comedians and presenters from Australia to France to imitate. Perhaps the most famous parody of her was by Liang Feng Yu of China Television System's evening news program in Taiwan, where Liang delivered election news on the 21st of December 2011, parodying and dressed like Ri, leading to her and her producer's demotion at China Television Systems. Ri was born on the 8th of July 1943 in Tongchon, Gangwon, in Japanese Korea, with Korea at the time united as a Japanese colony. Today, Tongchon is in the Gangwon province of North Korea, with famous people to have been born there, including former chief of the general staff of the Korea People's Army, Ri Yong Ho, as well as the founder of Hyundai, Chung Joo Yong. Her family was very poor and when Ri was aged three in October 1945, modern day North Korea was put under Soviet administration following the end of the Second World War with the Democratic People's Republic of Korea established on the 9th of September 1948. At the time, female North Koreans did not have to undertake military service allowing female North Koreans to enter tertiary studies directly or commence work. Ri proceeded to study at the Pyongyang University of Theatre and Film in Pyongyang, the capital of North Korea. Korea, today the Pyongyang University of Dramatic and Cinematic Arts. There she studied to become an actress, graduating with a degree in drama, which probably explains her melodramatic, almost acting, news broadcasts. It is from this school that North Korea's newsreaders on both radio and television are selected. North Korea was a late adopter of television with the central television broadcasting system known as CTBS DPRK, beginning operations on the 6th of March 1963 at 7pm. MKST, with studios headquartered in Pyongyang. In 1971, Ri as an actress caught the eye of CTBS DPRK and in February 1971 began on-screen work as a newsreader. On the 4th of January 1973, the station adopted Korean Central Television, KCT, its current name. It's worth noting that the station is complete and utter propaganda, focusing on the history and achievements of the Korean Workers' Party, the Korean People's Army, and the Juche ID. In 1974, she was part of North Korea's first color TV broadcast, with North Korea amazingly adopting color TV six years earlier than South Korea. Ri was consistently on air from the mid-1980s, in essence becoming the face of the country and KCTV in her trademark pink Chima Jeogogi. Uniquely, whereas other North Korean newsreaders have been purged or demoted, Ri has remained a key news anchor and the primary news anchor on KCTV, becoming a continual propaganda face to the West, while to North Korea their version of Peter Jennings or Walter Cronkite, there night after night on television, assuming that the power was actually working, in essence becoming what Reuters would label in 2009 the forceful grandmother speaking with the authority of the state as well as a high priestess. In many ways, Catherine H.S. Moon, a professor at Wellesley College in an interview with the United Kingdom's Channel 4, summed it up best in 2017, stating that Re serves as the public mother image or feminine image for the state because North Korea Korea never has allowed any of the wives of the North Korean leaders to be in public life. She's highly trusted by the state. She is literally the voice of the state to the public. People have become so accustomed to her face. She is the only one who is trusted by the people because she is the one they meet every night on the television. It also led to the BBC in 2016 labelling her as the most famous woman in North Korea and indeed probably the most famous newsreader in the world.
Her broadcasts are incredibly melodramatic and almost indicative of an actor, speaking in a wavering and exuberant tone when speaking about the Kims while visibly angry when denouncing North Korea's enemies including the United States of America and South Korea. A defector to South Korea, Kim Yong, stated that Ri has a very aggressive voice, one that North Koreans would say fills up the screen. Kim was shocked when he arrived in South Korea hearing news presenters in contrast to Ri, who sounded like mum and dad talking in their room, or stumbling over their words which would lead to a North Korean newsreader being fired. According to Brian Reynolds Myers, a professor at Dongseo University in Busan, South Korea, this has manifested as a result of Ri's training in drama at university. As a result, Ri has become entrusted with some of the biggest news stories in the history of North Korea, most notably tearfully announcing the death of Kim Il-sung on the 9th of July 1994, who died at 2am on the 8th of July 1994 with his death declared 34 hours later in respect of a Confucian mourning period. Thereby, Ri became known to the world as she cried during the broadcast while wearing a black mourning dress. She also covered Kim Il-sung's funeral. Moreover, in 2006, Ri announced to the world that North Korea had conducted its first nuclear test. Ri ended up getting married and had two sons, one of whom got married and had a granddaughter. Compared to the vast majority of North Koreans, she has lived a highly privileged life in Pyongyang, with her own car and a chauffeur and a mansion in the centre of Pyongyang up until 2022. It's worth noting that North Korea has one of the lowest rates of car ownership in the world, with one car per 1,000 people, and a total of 30,000 cars for a population of 26 million as of 2022. She has also had her hair trimmed at the Chaga Wanguan Beauty Salon in Pyongyang and her clothes made personally for her. On the 19th of October 2011, Ri had suddenly disappeared from North Korean television screens, giving speculation as to what had happened to her and if she had fallen foul of the regime of Kim Jong-il. However, Ri was seen once again, but this time to the world, as on the 19th of December 2011, Ri announced that Kim Jong-il had passed away. 51 hours early on the 17th of December 2011 at 8.30am, she also announced to the world that Kim Jong-un, under the broadcast, the great successor, would be the new leader of North Korea and also presided over Kim Jong-il's funeral on the 28th of December 2011. It was with the insane leadership of Kim Jong-un that Ri as the propaganda mouthpiece of the Kim regime developed a further and strong relationship with Kim Jong-un. On the 23rd of January 2012, Ri gave her first interview to a foreign media outlet from her Pyongyang studio to China's CCTV. She noted that she would be stepping away from regular broadcasting, would be training the next generation of North Korean news readers and, well, so-called journalists, and would only be there for big announcements and news stories. These have included narrating the military parade in North Korea held on the 16th of February 2012 commemorating the 70th birthday of Kim Jong-il as well as the military parade on the 15th of April 2012 commemorating the 100th birthday of Kim Il-sung. In the same year she was awarded the Kim Il-sung Prize, an award given by the government of North Korea to persons who demonstrate exemplary service to the values of Juche, in many ways one of the highest honours someone in North Korea can achieve. On the 12th of February 2013, she announced to the world that North Korea had successfully conducted its third nuclear test. On the 27th of July 2013, Ri participated in the narration of the military parade on the victory day of the Fatherland Liberation War. After this, Ri gave her second and final foreign news interview to Taiwan's FTV News, with the interview conducted by Hu Wanling. On the 6th of January 2016, I guess besides people starving and everything being batshit crazy, nothing much really happened in North Korea in the preceding 2.5 years, she broadcast news to the world that North Korea had successfully tested its first hydrogen bomb. On the 4th of July 2017, Ri broadcast that North Korea had tested and exploded its first intercontinental ballistic missile and on the 29th of November 2017, announced to the world that North Korea had successfully tested the intercontinental missile Hwasong-15.
On the 14th of June 2018, she told North Koreans that Kim Jong-un was meeting with Donald Trump as part of a 2018 North Korea United States Singapore summit, which took place on the 12th of June 2018 with propaganda documentaries broadcast about the event, hailing it as some massive political victory for North Korea. This led President Trump to gush on Ri and say that she should work on cable news in the United States of America. She also presented a New Year's broadcast on New Year's Eve 2018, celebrating the New Year. While this might seem blasé and slightly normal, it was unique for North Korea, as this is usually only reserved for Kim Jong-un and members of the Kim family. She also reported on the 2019 North Korea United States Hanoi Summit held at Hotel Metropole in Hanoi, Vietnam between the 27th and 28th of February 2019, reading a five and a half minute news report. She also reported on the 2019 Korea's United States DMZ summit held between President Moon Jae-in of South Korea, Kim Jong-un, and Donald Trump, which saw Trump actually walk across the DMZ and into North Korea. In North Korea, relabeled it as a historic and amazing event, while the West, including the Washington Post reporter Anna Fifield and Nick Robertson of CNN, saw it as an important propaganda victory for Kim Jong-un. However, since then, she has become a rarity on North Korean television, having presented very few news stories, with many seeing this as a changing of the guard for North Korean television, with Sky News and The Sun reporting that she was being replaced by younger presenters. And in May 2019, at the behest of Kim Jong-un, North Korean TV got a makeover as a sign of a changing times, with new graphics, fresh-faced younger female newsreaders, chatty dialogue, and live reports from field reporters, including including interviewing members of the public. Jung Hae Sung, a former KCTV reporter who defected to South Korea in the 1990s, told NPR the North Korean authorities know that they can't go with the old ways of propaganda and idealizing leaders forcing KCTV to change, and in many ways, at least for now, forcing Ri to be sidelined for many stories, potentially as a sign of the changing of the guard and the changing times within North Korea and KCTV's television broadcasting. The last story that she presented as a newsreader for the first time wearing glasses was as of a recording of this video on the 25th of March 2022 when North Korea launched an intercontinental ballistic missile as a test which was authorized by Kim Jong-un in a bizarre quasi Top Gun style parody leading to international condemnation. Her loyalty has not gone unrewarded by the Kim regime, and on the 14th of April 2022, arm in arm with Kim Jong-un, Ri was given a spacious new house with Kim noting that the party would spare nothing for a national treasure like her, who has worked as a revolutionary announcer for more than 50 years. She narrated a report for KCTV on her new house which was terraced and overlooked the river, a true luxury for Pyongyang. Ri told KCTV that her new house was like a hotel and that all of her family members had stayed up all night in tears of deep gratitude for the party's benevolence. But was this really a sign of Ri being an effective propaganda piece and a loyal propaganda piece of a Kim regime? Well, not really. It was seen, according to the Associated Press, as an attempt to boost the loyalty of elite North Koreans like Ri, as North Korea grapples with failure, including COVID-19, a troubled economy, and a stalemate in the nuclear diplomacy with the United States of America under the administration of President Joe Biden. Thank you for watching. Please do yourself a favor and hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to inform yourself of when new videos come out. Also, why not hit that like button and leave a nice comment? It helps more than you know and your support is truly appreciated. Until next time, stay awesome, stay classy, be kind to everyone you meet, have an amazing day, and remember that truth is always more interesting than fuction.